Hi, I'm Margaret, and welcome to Garden School. Today I've gone for a little walk here in the woods and I'm just kind of struck by the fact that in a space of just a few feet I see three different kinds of native ferns just growing right next to each other and probably within about 50 yards of me, uh, maybe even less, I would find another native fern that grows here. Well, let's take a look at those ferns and then about just a refresh on the fern life cycle. So along this path, there's a bunch of just beautiful western sword fern species. Um, and then right next to it, what I think is a lady fern. Yeah, and, and look, right next to that, a deer fern. Really cool with its very leathery fronds and then it, the, the uh, spike that, that uh, will come up will come up kind of tall and curl like that. Pretty cool. So there's three right there as I'm just in this just like two foot spot here in the, along the path. Of course you can see that the predominant fern species is the western sword fern. That's really great. But it is nice to see those other cuties, and the lady fern, and the deer fern. Now let's go and find that fourth one that I saw. Aha, there we go. So growing up along this maple, oh my goodness, over here, I wanna show you this, or along this fallen maple log, are a fern that wants to grow, wants to find its habitat typically above the ground. I don't recall the name of this one offhand. I'm gonna have to look it up, make sure. But this is different from the sword fern, even though the fronds look very similar. It's a different fern. Yeah, here this is. This is the licorice fern. And it's called a licorice fern because the rhizomes that um, here, that the base, what you might call the root, but, but it's really a rhizome, they have a small, uh, a strong licorice taste. Uh, I don't know that that's recommended, but that's what, <laughs> that's why it's called a licorice fern. And I found another one, a uh, bracken fern. Um, this one's pretty tall. It's maybe two and a half feet tall. It's kind of on the downside of its uh, growth, but it's very similar uh, to the lady fern, but this is a little bit different. Uh, this is a bracken fern. Now I made a quick sketch here showing the alternation of generations which is present in the ferns. So one generation is haploid, so it just has one set of chromosomes, and then there's another uh, process that happens, which is the diploid, where there are two sets of chromosomes. Let's start here with the sporophyte. So this is our familiar looking fern. It has roots, it's green, frondy. Um, on the fertile fronds, there will develop sori. Now the singular is, singular is sorus, and those are the structures that will contain spores. Um, here we can see that uh, there's a little structure that is releasing spores, and the spores are haploid, so the spores are one set of chromosome. As we continue on, we get a little bit of change here happening, some growth happening on the spore, and then it develops into a gametophyte, which is typically heart-shaped, maybe the size of a fingernail, so it's not, not big, it's small. It doesn't have roots, it has rhizoids, and it has also little structures, um, archegonium and antheridium, which will contain the uh, female, the eggs, and the male, the sperm, in those individual structures. Now, as the gametophyte develops and those structures develop with the gametes in them, 
you, you need to have water. Now the water is important for the gametes to be able to physically relocate so that you can get fertilization. Then at fertilization, we are gonna have two sets of chromosomes and we get a zygote. So there's the developing zygote into a frond, I mean, into a fern, and it is developing on the uh, gametophyte. You can see the gametophyte still there with a young sporophyte developing right out of uh, one of the archegonia. Um, and then it will develop into the adult sporophyte, the familiar looking fern, uh, fern that we like to see. That is the alternation of generations in ferns. Well, I hope you appreciated that little refresher on the life cycle of a fern. So if you happen to be on um, Jeopardy and you get asked the question about alternate generations, you can win. <laughs> Well, here's, here's some more spores on this fern. It's on my uh, front porch in a container. It's not a native to my location, but I sure do like it. Um, anyway, well, <laughs> look at some ferns around your environment and check out the spores. You will probably find some. And um, then you can understand a little bit more about the life cycle of ferns. There's always more to learn in the garden. Bye-bye.